Hey everyone, so today we are on day number six and we're just going to look at the unit circle a little bit more. Uh, last night on your homework you had to find, you know, like all the values, right? You had to find um, like the reciprocals like secant, cosecant, tangent, cotangent, and sometimes it was a little bit hard. So I figured I'd just do a video on how to simplify those unit circle values a little bit better and find the reciprocals. Hopefully you were able to do on your homework, but this is just a little help for those of you that maybe had a challenging time doing the reciprocals for your unit circle values. All right, here we go. Okay, so like I said, we're going to be finding those reciprocals. So basically we're taking the fractions and we're simplifying them. All right, so really quick, just to make sure we're all on the same page here. Um, tangent, we know with our unit circle, tangent is opposite over adjacent, um, but unit circle, it's gonna end up being y over x. All right, um, which means that cotangent is going to be x over y. Because remember, they're reciprocals of each other, uh, tangent and cotangent, so you just flip it. All right, um, cosecant, so first off, for sine, we know that sine is y, right? So that means that cosecant, which is the reciprocal of y, or reciprocal of sine, is y flipped. Right, well we know, you know, y can be made a fraction of y over one, so cosecant becomes one over y. All right, so it's flipped, all right? Same thing goes for cosine. So we know that cosine of theta is x, we are gonna have to flip this, so we're gonna just write it as a fraction, so x over one, um, which means that our secant value is gonna be one over x. All right, now, if you don't like dealing with that whole reciprocal thing, um, I'm gonna look at it kind of from a special right triangle point of view. So maybe it makes a little bit more sense. Some people have a hard time seeing like the flip. Um, so I'm just gonna sketch out our right triangles. You don't have to do this. We did our right triangles in the last video, um, but I kind of have them here. So I'm just gonna kind of use them. So for the 45, 45, I know that this unit circle, so my radius or my hypotenuse is one. Um, that means this is going to be root two over two, and this side is also square root of two over two. All right, so if I wanted to find the tangent, all right, so I know this looks scary. So tangent, right, is y over x. Well, this is our, this is our x, right, it's along the x-axis, and then our y value, like that's our height, right? So that's going to be the square root of two over two, but I mean, they're the same, right? So tangent is y over x. And y is the square root of 2 over 2 over x, which is also the square root of 2 over 2. All right. Now, you can see this and simplify very, very easily, right? If you have something divided by itself, it simplifies to 1. But we can also use our math property for fractions, which is you for dividing, you keep the top. You flip the bottom and then you change the sign. So KFC, we talked about that in our unit zero, uh, simplifying uh, this is what we call a complex fraction. So you keep square root of two over two, you flip the bottom, so it becomes two over root two, and then you change division to multiplication. And then you can simplify, right? This simplifies, right? We call this cross simplifying, not cross multiplying. That's something totally different. All right, cross simplifying, all right, and then uh, so that simplifies to one over one, and then same thing here, root two over two, root two over two, that simplifies to one, so this gives us equals one. So the tangent of your 45, 45, 90 right triangle is one. Excellent, super easy. All right, uh, let's look at cosecant. All right, so you can remember that y is root two over two. So cosecant is one over y, so one over root two over two. But if you don't remember that, then think of it like this triangle, right? Cosecant is hypotenuse over opposite, right? Because it's sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So then cosecant is hypotenuse over opposite. So hypotenuse is one opposite is root two over two. All right, so it comes out to the same thing. You either can remember that the reciprocal rule, so it's one over y, or you can just sketch yourself a triangle and then you can do the hypotenuse over opposite for cosecant. All right, anyways, we do have to simplify this. So we're going to do our keep, flip, change. 
All right, so we keep the top, which is one. We flip the bottom, so two over root two, and then we change it to multiplication. All right, now one over, one is one over one, right? So I, anytime I have a whole number and I'm doing fraction stuff, I generally tend to make it um, the, one, the whole number into a fraction also, just because it makes it kind of nice. And for this one, we are going to just multiply straight across because there's nothing to cross simplify. So this becomes one times two, which is two, and then one time root two, which is just square root of two. Now, we can't leave it like this. We do have to rationalize our denominator. So we're going to go ahead and multiply top and bottom by the square root of two in order to get that square root out of the denominator of our fraction. So that becomes two square root of two over square root of two times square root of two is two. And then we can simplify this. And yes, you need to simplify this. Two divided by two is one. So this simplifies to just the square root of two. So if you're 45, 45, 90 right triangles, your cosecant value is the square root of two. Now, to save us some time, since our y value is the same as our x value, um, I'm not going to do this whole thing again for secant. All right, I, I will write it though, um, but we're not gonna kind of do that whole math thing, right? Secant is gonna be pretty much the same thing. So it's one over X, X is square root of two over two. We just did this math above, so I'm not, like I said, going to do it again. This does simplify to the square root of two. So in our 45, 45, 90, our tangent value is one, our cosecant value is root two, our secant value is also root two, and we didn't do cotangent, but we can do cotangent really quickly. Um, because if tangent is one, then cotangent is one over one, which is just one. All right, so there are your values for your 45, 45. So now remember, these will never change, right? Because the values for your unit circle never change. The only thing that's going to change is the positive or negative sign if you're in a different quadrant. All right, all of this is first quadrant because that's how I drew my triangle. Um, but if you were doing cosecant of 45 degrees in quadrant two, so you were doing the cosecant of 135 degrees, it would be, um, well, it would be positive root two because if sine is positive, then cosecant is positive, but secant would be negative square root of two, right? Because in the second quadrant, so if you're doing secant of 135, it would be negative square root of two. Um, but yeah, so remember uh, these value, the values never change, but your positive and your negative signs will change depending on um, what quadrant you're in. Okay, last but not least, we are gonna go ahead and do the 30, 60, 90 triangles. All right, so really we're just practicing simplifying our um, values. So just like we do with the other side, I'm gonna fill this in really quick. So 30, so this is going to be one half, this is going to be square root of three over two. So for tangent, tangent of theta, all right, so we know that tangent is y over x. So y is the square root of three over two over x, which is one half. All right, I'm gonna use my fraction math. So I keep the top, flip the bottom, change the sign. So root three over two times two over one. All right, so I kept the top, flip the bottom, change the sign. I can do some cross simplifying to the two simplify out. So what I'm left with is just root three over one, which is the square root of three. So for 30 degrees, right? So when we're dealing with 30 degrees here, all right, our tangent value is the square root of three. Now, cotangent, all right, you have two options. You can either set it up doing cotangent starting off, or you can take the tangent value since we have it and you can just do one over that value. I'm gonna choose to do the option where I just start from the very beginning. So tangent is uh, y over x. So cotangent is x over y. So this is gonna be one half over the square root of three over two. So again, keep the top one half, flip, two over root three and change it to multiplication. All right, again, the twos will simplify out. So what I'm left with is one over the square root of three, which again, we could have gotten by just doing one over the square root of three. One over tangent is cotangent. 
Um, but anyways, we did it the long way. doesn't matter. All right. Um, so now we do need to rationalize the denominator because we cannot leave a three in the denominator of our fraction. So what we're going to do, multiply top and bottom by the square root of three, and that gives us the square root of three over three. And we can't simplify anything else. So that is our cotangent value. All right. Um, the two that we have left are going to be our cosecant and our secant value. So um, co, I don't know why I started with an S. That was strange. Uh, so cosecant, this is our one over Y. So one over the Y value, which is root three over two. Again, I keep the top. I'm going to make it a fraction, one over one. Uh, flip the bottom and change it to multiplication. All right, multiply straight across. I have two over the square root of three. I need to rationalize. So I multiply top and bottom by the square root of three. This gives me two square root of three over three, and that's as simplified as I can get. All right, last but not least, we have secant, which is a little bit easier for this one, right? So secant is gonna be one over the X value, which is one half. So I have one over one times flip two over one which this is nice, right? I have one over one times two over one. This becomes uh, two over one, which is just two. So your secant value is two. All right, so this is for your 30 degree triangles. All right, so all of this that we just did, all right, this is for 30 degrees. Now, because Ms. Lastly is relatively lazy, she doesn't want to do all that work again, right? Because I know that for my 60 degree triangle, all of this, the numbers are going to stay the same. They're just going to like flip, right? All the X stuff changes to Y stuff and all the Y stuff changes to X stuff because all the 60 degree triangle is, is just your rotated 30 degree angle. And I, we'll, we'll look at it, right? So for your 60 degree triangle, right? We know that this is square root of, Oh my God, Miss Lastly is an idiot. Complete idiot. I did the 60 degree triangle first because I am slow. Oh my goodness gracious. Hold on guys. Do do do. Okay, hold on, I'm deleting that and that because it's wrong. And that and that. <laughs> oh. Sorry, it's only my second video, being back, coming some slack. <laughs> all right, so I'm zoomed out so you guys can see what I'm doing here. All this stuff that I just did is not for 30 degrees, it's for 60 degrees, because in the 60 degree triangle, your adjacent side is one half and your opposite side is root three over two. I just did all of this for the wrong angle. It doesn't matter. This is our 60 degree angle stuff, sorry. Okay, I just did my adjacent and my opposite sides wrong. Okay, so all this that I just did, that is for 60 degree angles, all right? So now, like I was saying, but just like the wrong way, for the 30 degree angles, it's the same values, it's just kind of switched. So now I'm gonna actually do the 30 degree value ones. All right, so for 30 degrees, you have your um, adjacent side is root three over two, not what I was saying earlier, which was one half because that's that's dumb. Um, and your opposite side is one half. It'll catch up, it's kind of frozen right now. <sighs> there it goes. Okay, so there's your 30 degree triangle. All right, so this really doesn't, okay. Okay, I just switched the triangles really quick. Um, that way I can kind of write stuff down. <laughs> All right, so I just moved the 30 degree triangle over. All right, we'll do that one in blue. All right, so here we go. Um, so if I wanted to do tangent, right? So tangent of this 30 degree angle right here. So tangent opposite over, opposite over adjacent or you can think of it as y over x. All right, well, I've already done this math right, one half over root three over two, it just so happens that that is my cotangent value for uh, my 60 degree, right? So I'm not gonna do it again, I'm just going to write the value. So this simplifies to the square root of three over two. So for the 30 degree triangle, your tangent value is square root of three over three. 
boop, boop. There we go. All right, cotangent, guess what? That's going to be our uh, root 3 over 2 over 1 half. So that's going to be uh, adjacent or x over y, which is 1 half. And again, I don't need to simplify this because I've already done it right here. It simplifies to the square root of 3. All right, um, for cosecant, all right, that's 1 over y. So 1 over y, y is now 1 half. So I have 1 over 1 half. Again, I don't need to do this math because I've already done it. Cosecant is going to be the secant of our 60 degrees. So the cosecant of 30 is the same as the secant value of 60, which simplifies to 2. And then last but not least, my secant value for my 30 degree triangle um, is going to be 1 over x, 1 over root 3 over 2. And again, I've already done this math, so I'm not going to do it again. It simplifies to 2 root 3 over 3. Ta-da! Okay, so those are your reciprocal values. Um, again, this isn't anything new. You could have hopefully done this on your own, but I figured we'd go over it in case there was anyone who had some confusion on how to simplify uh, the reciprocals and get those, those fraction values. All right, until the next time. Bye, guys.